Hi guys! Welcome back to another Colorful Keto with Dory. So, we have a special guest tonight. We are getting together with Robin Davis of Keto for Life, and we're going to talk about our roots. Where do we come from? What's our story? How did she begin? How did she begin her group? And all things keto. So, I'm super excited. Uh, while we wait for Robin to join us, let's dance a little, because why not? Oh, there she is! Yay! Let's get her in! Miss Robin, add, add, connect, connect. Happy Wednesday, guys. <laughs> it's Wednesday. It's hump day. I don't know if you guys are bearing the week all that well. Do we got sound? Hey, I can hear you. Pardon me. I'm walking at the same time. You know, yes. Um, yes, I can hear you this time. Okay. I just want to take a moment to say, suck it, internet. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It has been <laughs> awful. I thought it was me. I thought, you know, I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing, but hang on. I know you can't see me. Don't worry. That's okay. We'll wait for um, you to sit. But apparently, it, wait, it wasn't me. It was It was Instagram. It was Facebook. Oh, it was... Updates. Because I couldn't watch anybody else's stuff. It's just a conspiracy of some kind. I know, right? Why? I love you, Facebook. Why you don't love me back? Yeah, you're all over <laughs> I don't know if you saw it, comments in my group today. The question, people were saying they're going to send you a keto cake with a fine uh, on it to get out of jail. Oh, um, hey, oh, how, okay, I got to share, I got to get this Sharon in my group because. Okay, yes, um, you do that and uh, you take a moment to share it and I'll let people know what we're going to talk about today. How do I do it? Okay, so you want to go to my public page, Colorful Keto with Dory, Bariatric yeah, Lifestyle Coach. Okay, no, um, do you have another device you can look on? Maybe I can do it for Sorry, you on mine. I'm going to grab my laptop. Sorry, I'm unprepared. <laughs> this, this, this is how smooth we are, just saying, like, what? Oh, I know what to do. This is easy. My Donna is watching. We can ask Donna to share it for us. My Donna, can you go to my public page and share this to my group, Colorful Keto Lifestyle, and to Robin's group if you're a member, Keto for Life, and if you're not a member, join, darling. We love Robin. <laughs> Robin is uh, darling. Uh, the reason my hair looks like Cindy Lou Who today, it's like 116 degrees in here. It said that when I got my truck. <laughs> I'm just, I think my brain is fried. Okay, I got to go to your, oh, to your, you my public page. page. Yeah. And honestly, on yeah, on Facebook. So my colorful, keep, it's colorful keto Dory. Colorful keto with Dory. See, and again, I just changed the name of it because... Is I came back from, the bariatric yes, yes, because I came back from KetoCon, and I'm going to tell you what, Carrie Brown looked me in the face in the most staunch British accent I've ever seen and said, who are you? What do you do? And I went, oh God, who am I? What do I do? And I spent a lot of time really thinking about what I have been doing, what direction I'm heading, you know. Who, who are my people? Who are my tribe? Who who needs my help the most? And I, I really realized I have three separate niches. <laughs> okay, this is us right here. Okay, so yes. Uh, Please to share. my group too. Share. Hang on, hang on. And then that way they don't have to catch it on the replay. Because it breaks their hearts when they don't get to watch it live. They're like, what? I had to wait for the replay? That wasn't very nice. Okay, share, so, share, share. I'm yay! There, guys. Love it, love it. So what we're going to talk about tonight is beginnings. We're going to talk about beginnings, our roots, where Robin began, how she found ketogenic diet, how it's worked for her and how it's changed her life. And then you guys get some of my story too, how I found, how, how I've seen improvements in my life. So if you're all shared up and ready to go, Miss Robin... <laughs> I think I think I Yay. am. Andrea, Andrea, are you watch, just out of curiosity? Are you watching this in the group? Because in the Facebook group, I don't know. I want to make sure I did it right. It said I did it right, but it's me. Who knows? <laughs> well, while we're talking about sharing, I'm gonna do my shameless. Please share for me, guys. So I'll explain to you why I'm in Facebook jail. Because I never used to use Facebook at all. Like, at all, at all. So every time I do something on Facebook, it tracks for two weeks. And then it goes, oh, that's too much stuff. And it blocks me from that. 
So then after two weeks, I get back on and then it's like, oh goodness, you're doing too much stuff again for two weeks. The first time I got blocked was for 28 posts in two weeks. So not two a day. So one in my group, one on my own personal page, and I allowed 19 people to become my friend. And it's never stopped. So I love you guys. For the last six months, I'm in Facebook jail every two weeks. I just don't complain to you guys. But every two weeks... Facebook jail for Dory. So that's why I can only share in groups every once in a while. So if you guys see anything on my public page, copy it from there, share it there. But when I share it to Facebook, Facebook puts me in jail. So sad. We'll get now. We're going to get it. Get, uh, get Free Dory. Can you guys see me? I can't see myself. Oh, I can see you. You're awesome. You're perfect. Okay. I can't, I've, I've got like a black screen here. Here we go. That's Here we crazy. go. I can't see myself. I, I, I know what I look like. Uh, well, hi, everybody. Oh, hi. Um, Dory, and I, Dory and I were talking today, and normally we're doing cooking stuff, and Dory's always dancing and having fun, and she still has the lights on. And um, I just, you know, there's so many people in, in my group, and um, that I, I just think different things resonate with, with people, things that we don't talk about enough. And um, so, the people in my group know more about me than like anybody ever did because I was hid everything. Um, so we decided to share this just to kind of get it out there. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully somebody out there is like, okay, that's me. And just know that, you know, you're, you're not by yourself. So I wanted to let you know what, um, you know, kind of where I came from and what has actually happened, what keto's actually did for me. It kind of saved my life. Not just, not really medically. Cause I, I, I wasn't, I mean, I was never, I'll start, I was never like obese. I was, but I was always bigger. Um, and this goes back to, to grammar school. Um, and all, all, and I say all, because in my grammar school mind, everybody was skinny except me, like really skinny, everybody. Um, and I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't like, I really, I realize now that I wasn't even probably even overweight, but I was five foot six inches tall in sixth grade. That's where I tapped out. So I was taller than everybody. Um, I was, um, and I was just bigger. I was very athletic. I played sports, but I was bigger. And for whatever reason, you know, you can blame the media. You can blame whatever you want. You know, everybody's always got to be skinny, skinny, and perfect. And I wasn't. I and mean, I would go as far as copying what other people ate to try to look like them. Um, I mean, I did things like, uh, I'm almost legally blind right now uh, because, you know, one of the popular kids had glasses. I didn't need glasses, but I lied and baked it, baked it seriously. And it, it just, I destroyed my eyes, but that's a whole other story. Okay, whatever. Uh, so, I love you. Well, it was the same thing. And when, when I got to be an adult, none of that changed. Um, things I had done, I have done every diet, except Jenny Craig. I'm not sure why I never did that. Uh, but I have done every diet. Um, I've taken every pill. If it came on the market, I bought it. When they made things like Fenfen or Fentermine, whatever it was, I think oh. illegal in the United States, I'll be able yes. to go find a pharmacy internationally and fake some kind of prescription. I think the statute of limitations is out, so I can tell you all this. Um, <laughs> to get, I have gone up to 12 oh. days without eating. Uh, and no, I wasn't fasting. I was starving myself to lose some weight. Um, I have abused laxatives. I have tried to, um, uh, I've tried to, to throw up after I ate. I tried to be bulimic. I couldn't. I don't know why. I could never do it. So that just made me feel worse. I couldn't even throw up. There. Uh, you know? What kind of and fat failure am I? I geez. So, but I, I did try. Um, so I did all this stuff. And this went on, uh, I'm 44 now. I started keto when I was 41. Um, but this went on for 30 years and, um, you know, I just, it was just, it became normal for me taking all these pills, um, taking, you know, anything. And I would run, um, I would be at the gym all the time and I did a lot of running and I didn't particularly love running. I ran anywhere from at least the very minimum eight to 15 miles a day, oh dear every, God. day oh every day, every day. Um, Many of the times without eating, like without you, you know, still I wouldn't eat for 12 days. And when you don't eat for 12 days, so anyway, if anyone can say eating disorder, eh, um, I was never diagnosed with an eating disorder because I never told anybody about it ever. 
um, because I didn't want anyone to know because somehow I knew it was, it was wrong. It was, you know, whatever. Um, and I was embarrassed and I realized now I need to talk about it because other people are going through the same thing. Um, and so anyway, uh, I was diagnosed, I was also diagnosed with, um, four different, at least four, maybe six, but definitely four autoimmune diseases, um, in my mid thirties, uh, or early to mid thirties. And I mean, it didn't matter. There was, I would force myself to run. I wouldn't eat. I would do, I mean, all these terrible things, but it was all in an effort to, um, get skinnier and I would lose weight, but then I would binge eat. So I don't know, I guess we had another eating disorder on top of that, <laughs> I binge eating. Um, and then I'd gain it all back and then some, and then I'd hate myself some more. And then it just back and forth and back and forth. Um, and then my back started going at this, at this oh. juncture, I have had 18 spine surgeries. Oh. So up until, um, I have degenerative spine disease among other oh. things and it just kind of crumbles. So, um, running is no longer an option. So anyway, just about three years ago, um, a friend mentioned something to me about, you know, something about the way she eats and I kind of dismissed it. But then I realized it was a diet I hadn't tried yet. It was just one I hadn't tried. And I wish I could sit here and tell y'all um, that <coughs> I did diet for health reasons because I wanted to be healthy. Sorry, guys. I call bullshit on that one. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Um, I wanted to lose I, wa I hadn't tried this diet yet. I wanted to lose some weight. Um, I was having two, three, four flare-ups a year for my autoimmune stuff, bad. Um, and then I have I was on 24 different prescription medications. Oh. But my doctors told me, oh, that's fine. Disease, never going to go away. So, you know, you got them. So that was just normal for me. And then when I had a flare-up, I'd have to go get on some prednisone. And, of course, everyone knows what prednisone does. So that just makes me feel even worse. Anyway, so I decided to try this diet that I had tried it, and I um, I failed for the first six months because I love bread. Sweets were never my thing. I love bread. I love crackers. I love. I could eat literally an entire pack. Talk about binge eating, an entire packages of bagels and cream oh. cheese, and wash it down with family size bag of Doritos, and still be looking for more food. That was just me. And then I, of course, feel guilty, try to throw up, couldn't do it, um, and then go run. With, with a horrible back, you know, and run and run and run and run. So anyway, that was my life, you know, probably pretty miserable. Um, so I tried this keto thing, and, and I tried to, in the beginning, I, I failed miserably. Well, not miserably. I, um, I, didn't, I didn't lose any weight. I didn't gain any, though, either, which was odd because I was eating a lot. Um, but I was trying to recreate everything. I was making keto breads. I was making um, keto versions of all my favorite stuff, and I was just eating them all the time. I wasn't listening to what my body was telling me. I wasn't just eating when I was hungry. I was just eating because I don't know. I like to eat and it's it, it good stuff. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not a it's bad good food. food. It tastes good. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden one day I realized I didn't hurt as much as I used to, even though I wasn't losing weight. And I don't know why I, I didn't abandon this diet. Cause I think any other one, it was a, a God thing. I think any other diet that I hadn't lost weight on in six months, I'm sure I would have just said this is stupid and didn't do it anymore. I thought for some reason I didn't. And then one day I said, you know what? I need to just regroup, simplify this, go back to basics and start learning. And when I tell you guys, I became obsessed. I became obsessed. So <laughs> three years ago, 24 different autoimmune diseases, um, starving myself, trying to throw oh. up, you know, you name it. I was doing it, taking every pill, powder, um, whatever, and just being miserable today. Um, I'm on zero medications. Zero, zero, zero. What? I have not had an autoimmune flare-up in over three years. I haven't had a migraine oh. in almost two years now. And, and I I never expected any of this stuff. And then yes. I just started to become, you know, obsessed. And But I guess uh, and my point to all of this is that, um, you know, there's it's not about the food. It's about, for me anyway, what was going on up here. Yes. Um, food represented, I'm not even sure what, um, it represented some kind of comfort. Because I wasn't hungry, that's not what no. I was eating. Um, I don't know, but I never really took the time to figure it out. I just kept feeding myself, and, and, and I never tried to stop. But keto just did that for me. So that's... And, and, I don't know how. I didn't ask it to. I asked it to just be a diet that worked for a change. Yeah. Um, that's a from it. But it got me off all my medications. I, I wanted to oh. lose 25 pounds. Keto said, nah, 
we want you down 28 pounds. I, once I once I simplify, I lost 28 pounds like that, like without even trying. And that was over two years ago. And I've just stayed here. I've done nothing different. And it just, I mean, it just, it, it has done so much for me, not just the weight. Because, yeah, if you're 25 pounds, 28 pounds overweight, it's not the end of the world. You're probably not going to, you know, die from that. Uh, probably not. But it has just done so much for me mentally that I don't think about not eating anymore unless I'm actually fasting for a purpose. Um, I don't think about, you know, taking laxatives or I haven't tried to throw up in three years. <laughs> um, oh. You know, so whether it does this for everybody or not, um, I think that, that being overweight isn't about or being unhealthy because of food you eat isn't it's more mental and whenever I talk to my group about okay steps to get started on keto the number one step I always Mindset. give is be mentally prepared Ment- mentally you think because I think 90% is mental so that's my story that's what keto has done for me oh. and um, you know with one person out there it says oh, oh my god I do those things um, give this a shot because It'll, it'll just it'll change your life it will and and I want to start by saying we're so proud of you like we are so <laughs> proud of you because you know what this is our private shame these are the things we never told people and and I still feel sickly ashamed of myself when I admit my old eating habits so I guess I'll start there and I'll say um, when I was 10 years old is when people started saying things like oh you have such a pretty face story if you could lose a little bit of weight I was 10, I was in grade 5, it was a cool girl who was a couple years older than me, and it never stopped from there. My whole life I heard, oh you have such a pretty face, if you could just lose weight you'd be stunning. And you know what, in high school I was like you, I wasn't fat, God if I could be that kind of fat again. You know, I, I, I was, I was a bigger girl, I was 170 pounds, 36, 24, 36 at 15 years old, 5'5", five, five. the perfect figure for a grown woman, but compared to all the girls who were, you know, 90 pounds soaking wet with a comforter on their back, I thought I was a buffalo. I was like, oh my God, I'm the fattest buffalo that ever was. Don't look at me, I'm, I'm hideous. And, you know, then I got older, I got pregnant with my son, I gained 100 pounds when I was pregnant with my son, because I thought... I was eating for two, and I did things like, um, oh, a chocolate for you and a chocolate for the baby. Oh, the baby really likes chocolate. The baby needs two. And, and I got really big. Like, I lost a little weight before I got pregnant, and then after I had my son, I was 290 pounds. And I would bounce from 260 to 290, but I never got under 260, and I would lose 10 pounds, gain 15. I would lose 20, and for years, from the time that my son was born until I finally made the decision to have surgery when he was 13, I played that game for 13 years where I bounced back that same 30 pounds, but I did all the things you did. I, I binge ate. I I followed the fad diets. I did things like, oh, Dory, fill up on brown rice and popcorn and things like that. They fill up your stomach. They keep you full longer. I was on a high carb, low fat, moderate protein diet my whole life, wondering why I kept getting fat. And here was my secret shame. So you don't eat much at meals, right? Nobody sees you eat. You don't eat in front of people because they judge you for being fat and putting food in your face. Like you could be sitting at a restaurant eating a salad and people look at you like, hmm, I wonder if she knows she's fat and she's eating still. Like clearly she could go without a few meals and people will say things like that to you. Like, when I was 19, a guy walked up behind me at the gas station and said, do you really think that Diet Pepsi you're buying with that chocolate bar is going to help you any? And I was like, wow, dude, I like the taste of Diet Pepsi. And no, I don't think this chocolate bar is going to help me lose weight. But thank you for thinking you can talk to a stranger like that in public because I'm fat and I don't have any feelings. Please, by all means, knock yourself out. So when my son was 13, I realized I was 10 years, 10 years away from my mother's stroke, her diabetes, and her heart attack that eventually took her in combination with cancer. 
And I realized I was unhealthy and I wasn't going to get to see my son grow to have children of his own. And I had looked into weight loss surgery many times, when he was six months, when he was five years old, when he was eight years old, and I let people talk me out of it. I, I let them berate me and I let them tell me that it was the easy way, that I didn't have any right to be healthy, that it was only being fat, I didn't have to be so vain. Um, I had people tell me things like... <laughs> It was your fault, right? Because well, was... yeah. Everyone else could be thin except for me. Clearly, I had no willpower. Even my doctor told me, maybe I should consider drinking a full glass of water before everything I put in my mouth, considering I clearly have no willpower. And I was like, fault. wow, of course, it, of course it's my fault, right? Like, it would be. So then you start to hide your food. And I wouldn't eat it in front of anybody else. And I would hide it, and then I would throw away the wrappers. And like you, I, I don't have the stomach for bulimia. I couldn't make myself throw up. I was like, bah, bah, do it, Dory. And then I could never do it. <laughs> I tried. I, I tried. I'm a failure at bulimia, too. I'll hold up my hand. So I had my surgery. And, and you know what? It did me really good for a long time. It limits the amount that you eat. But even when I had my surgery, my doctor was very clear. He said, Dory, this is a tool. This is not the answer. It is, it's a tool to aid you in weight loss, but it's not the be all end all. So I knew then I would have to learn how to eat healthy, but I didn't want to. I won't lie. I ate the same garbage that I ate just in a smaller amount because I can only eat four to six ounces of food at a time. And I did lose weight. I lost 130 pounds that way and I kept it off for six whole years. And then my mother passed away and I learned how to out eat my surgery because you know what? I can only eat a little bit, but I can eat a bite of a chocolate bar now and a bite in 20 minutes and a bite in 20 minutes and a bite in 20 minutes. And eventually I was eating two chocolate bars a day again. I was eating a bag of chips all day long. So all I was putting in my body then was junk. It was carbs, it was junk, it was candy, and that's all I ate because I could only eat a small amount. So I didn't waste my stomach space on good food. Like, come on. And, and when you have surgery, everybody's waiting for you to fail. Because when you have it, everybody's like, oh, you're not going to keep that off anyways. Or they say things like, oh, you look awesome, you've lost weight, but you didn't really do that, did you? You had surgery. You did it you the, easy, the way. easy way. Out. Easy way. And I'm going to tell you guys, because uh, one day I'll tell you my whole bariatric story, but I'm going to tell you that I was so sick that I could not physically not stop throwing up for four days straight, and I thought I was going to die. Like, I actually thought I was physically going to die, because they could not make me stop throwing up. So it's not the easy way. And you have to do two weeks of liquid diet before, because I don't love food, right? And after surgery, um, another month of liquid diet, and then another couple weeks of blended food. So altogether, I went without food for two months. That was not the easy way. I'll tell you what, keto is the easy way. <laughs> keto is the easy way. You mean the world's most restrictive diet? Right, the world's most hateful restrictive diet ever. So we'll jump to that, and I'll say, so I gained this 20 pounds, and I wanted to lose this 20 pounds. Now, my girlfriend came across... Keto OS. Ooh, the newest brand new shake. Because like you, shakes, pills, whatever, raise your hand, miracle cure. I have 20 pounds to lose. I have two weeks to spare. I don't really want to spend $100, but that would be worth it to lose 20 pounds. So we ordered two weeks of the shake. It comes in the mail, and the day it arrives, she calls me up. She's all excited. Oh, my God, Dory, I was researching the best way to use this shake, and there's a whole diet. And I was like, girl, you better back up off me with that D word. Like, I will cut you. I will cut you. <laughs> I, I said shake. I, I said nothing about diet. I never agreed that I would diet. I had weight loss surgery, so I didn't have to diet. So you better back off, off me. And she's like, oh, just I watch this video. Just watch the video, Dory. Promise, promise, promise. So I... I suck it up and I say, okay, I'll watch your stupid video. And I was, I was salty. I'm looking at my phone. I'm ready to press You're play. Salty? Me, I used to be salty all the time. This is the miracle of keto. I'm looking at my phone and I'm like, that's it. You're right, diet guy. I don't like your face. I already decided. I decided. I'm looking at my phone. I'm all salty. I'm all hateful. I'm like, that's it. Why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me, diet guy? Yeah. I don't like you. You don't look cool. I press play and immediately he starts talking about bulletproof coffee. And I'm like, dude, you're so gross. 
butter and coffee. And that, that was gross too. Right. Now my favorite, favorite thing. <laughs> um, hello. Um, I create all kinds of fancy bulletproof coffee. This is like my new obsession. But I was like, dude, if I didn't promise to watch you, I'd already press stop. But I watched it and I was getting saltier and saltier. And then, and then he said, bacon. And I was like, what? Hello? Uh, what is this bacon you speak of? Tell me more, Big Daddy. Tell me more. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm all in. I watched that video, which wasn't a great video. And at the end of that, I called her and I was like, okay. So I'm sorry I swore at your face. And I suppose you could send me a little bit of information about your diet. And it was me. I went nuts from there. I started Googling low carb because I didn't know. I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I didn't know keto diet was a thing. I called it ketogenic diet because I learned about it online. If you watch my first video, it's a glorious mess of me saying, Hi, welcome to my new channel. If you know lots about ketogenic diet or you don't know anything about ketogenic diet at all, we're going to learn together. Because that's how smooth I was. I learned online. Like, everything I learned, I learned on my own until month five. Month five was when I ran into a girlfriend when we were cross-country tripping. And she was like, oh, Dory, you do keto? I'll add you to my groups. And I was like, groups? What are you talking about? Oh, there's Facebook groups for that. <laughs> but Okay. I was like, all right, add me. And that's when I learned, again, like everybody else, I was doing everything wrong. And just like you, I did not lose any weight for six months. The first six months, I lost nothing. And again, why did I stick to it? I don't know. In the beginning, I decided right off the beginning, this is not a diet. This is not what I failed at every other time. This time, I'm going to make a healthy choice for me. And I decided that I could change a little bit at a time. And the first day I put five sugars instead of six, I was a rock star. Bite me. I made my family that celebrate is, me. Anybody new out there? Y'all, that is a win. Um, yeah, I know. We don't eat sugar on keto. But if you cut back... A little bit at a time. That's what I did. That's a win. That was a win. And I was like, you know what? Today, today, I'm not going to have the muffin on my sausage muffin, but I'm still going to have the hash brown. And then next time, I didn't have the hash brown. And then next time, I was like, you know what? Today, I might have this, but next time, I won't. And I slowly eased out of all of the things I was addicted to, including flavored creamer. That was my hardest to give up. I won't lie. I dug in my heels, and I was like, I already gave up everything. I'm not giving up everything. Bite me bite me really hard and then I looked at what was in it because before I never read labels either I had yeah. no idea what a label was I didn't know how to read them I didn't understand the information on them that's not even by the directions why would I look at that all we looked at is what how much fat was in it and tried to get the lowest number possible that's what yes I and what I've learned is when they take out the fat, they add carbs instead for flavor. So every time they said low fat, low fat, low fat, they're really saying high carb, high carb, high carb, high carb. Thank you. And, and then I wondered why I was fat. So when I found keto, I did it wrong like everybody does for months and months and months. And then when I realized that I didn't have to stress the numbers, I didn't have to stress the macros, I could just make healthy eating choices, guess what? The weight started to come off all by itself. And this is the major difference for me. Now, when I lost weight through my weight loss surgery, I, I got smaller, but I maintained exactly the same shape. Now, my shape was boob, roll, 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 stomach roll, double bum hip, and that was just my shape. Like, I, I had a very misshapen shape. And even though I had lost weight previously, I just downsized the exact same shape. And now, with the ketogenic diet, I've noticed things like slimming, ribs, collarbones, you know, the bones at the back of my shoulder that I didn't know existed. I don't contour my cheeks anymore, because my cheeks just do it now. I didn't know I was mimicking an actual facial feature. Did you? <laughs> I know. For me, it was um, people, people comment, and no, I don't exercise. I can't. I've had 18 spine surgeries, and I have... Uh, nerve damage in my neck and sometimes my arm doesn't even work and I kind of will be doing this I did it once earlier today people are like you know keto you know burns muscle this is what keto does I didn't do this it, this is all 
you know, with you in your face, me in my arms. It just, it, and I think that's why we want to tell everybody. And Dory, you said you made a mistake. You didn't lose for six months. I hate. I really sometimes hesitate to tell people I didn't lose any weight for six months because people go like, well, okay, I don't want any part of that. But I think what we're trying, you and I are trying to do is prevent oh. people from making the same mistakes we did. Well, so you don't have to figure it out yourself. And not only that, I didn't lose any weight. No, I did not lose any weight. But guess what? One day I woke up and went, hey, when was the last time I had a migraine? Hmm. Yep. Because I used to get migraines almost daily, and I always, because I had a car accident years ago, and I had just have a low-grade headache at all times that kind of flares up. So at all times of my life for the last five years, I kind of had a bit of a headache all the time. So unless it flared up really bad, I never even noticed. I just medicated. I medicated to get through. And then when I started keto, all of a sudden one day I was like, hmm, that's odd, actually. You know what? It's been like two weeks since I've had a migraine. That's weird. Oh, guess what? It's been a really long time since I've had irritable bowel syndrome. Oh, guess what? It's been a long time since I've been so depressed that I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. Hmm. That's interesting. So long before I saw any weight loss benefits, uh, my joints ached less. I had less headaches. I had less depressive tendencies and I'll tell you guys I it's no joke I've been depressed since I was three years old and I was diagnosed with dysthymia which is basically like my headaches low-grade permanent depression that's non-treatable so when they diagnosed me with this I was 23 years old my son was a baby and they basically said so depression is just part of your personality suck it up um, because it's yeah, not stuck with it just like just live with everything. it just live with it. Learn how to deal. Learn how to focus. And they said, because it's not an imbalance, uh, medication won't really help you, Dory. In really deep depressions, you can take medication, but long-term treatment with medication won't help you. Basically, their diagnosis was, I just needed to learn how to cope better. Get used to it. Get used to it. Suck it up. Life isn't so bad. You're just miserable every day. You know, you just wake up hating yourself, hating everybody else. And guess what? Then you pick friends who feed into that. You pick friends who are unhappy in their lives. They're miserable. They're in bad relationships. They're overweight, you know, and then we fed on each other's energy. You know, we right. played a game of... Probably make you feel a little bit better, too, knowing that, okay, maybe there's someone more miserable than me or someone fatter than yes. me. Or oh, my God, yes. Okay, let's touch on that. Um, I just want to say this, and then I want to let you react fattest girl in the room because I know every time I walked into a room the first thing I looked at is if I was the fattest girl in the room am I the fattest girl in this room right but I judged myself based on that you know and that was that is shameful because that's shaming other people for having the same issue I had but as long as I wasn't the fattest girl in the room it was okay like, I would walk into a room and go, oh, my dear God, I'm the fattest girl in this room. Everybody's going to be looking at me. Oh, dear God, I wish someone just five pounds heavier than me would walk in so I didn't have to be the fattest girl in the room every time. I hear you. Um, uh, that hippie chick is saying, what do you think is the biggest mistake new ketoers make? Oh, okay. Number one, I didn't even know what I was supposed to eat. So my number one mistake was, okay, I knew no grains and I knew no oatmeal. I knew no rice, but I didn't know things like I went out and I bought a uh, spinach pasta thinking it's out of spinach. It's better, but it's actually made out of spinach starch and it's not better. So honestly, the first mistake I made was just not being aware enough of ingredients. I just, I honestly, I had no clue. I didn't really know where I was starting. So I would say the first thing I refer to pe people to and the first thing in my pinned post is the ruled me list of foods. List of foods you can have, list of foods you can't have. First thing you need to know. List, and I have those up in my, y'all, if you haven't seen in our group, um, if you just search in the search bar and search the word reference, um, it, all the reference guides will come up. And none of those lists are all-inclusive. 
Um, but the rule of me one's good. There's some good ones out there. If you question something, question it. Um, but to, and for, for my side, my biggest mistake was trying to recreate um, every day. I mean, once in a while, I still make bagels once in a while. I put them in the freezer and I kind of forget about them once in a while. I have one. But in the beginning, I was trying to recreate everything. I didn't want to go without bread every day. So I was going to make keto bread. It needed every single day. And Twix bars, which are awesome, by the way. Oh, the yeah. And that, Duh. All this. It was keto, but I wasn't. I wasn't eating when I was hungry. I was eating all the time. And the strangest yes. thing is that I didn't gain any weight, but I didn't lose any. And I think once I simplified, yes, it is not. I'm a, I'm a counter. I'm a macro counter. I'm a, and I am three years later. I still track and count everything. That's my personality. Um, but it just simplifying, um, making sure I was always, you know, doing true keto. So many people say, um, you know, I can have bread. I do keto the way I want to do keto. Um, okay. I'm a vegetarian. I eat bacon. I'm a vegetarian. Wait, I want to be a vegetarian. I want to eat bacon. That's me nuts. Um, who gives up bacon? Like crazy people. Give up bacon. You can eat anything you want. I don't care what you eat. I mean, I do kind of. I, I do care what you I eat. I do. But you can eat anything you want. But um, if you're eating bread because it's under 20 grams, you're not eating keto. It just yes. Let you in on a little secret there. Keto is about good, real food. Um, you know, if there's more than a couple ingredients, and certainly some, you know, any that you can't pronounce, y'all maybe shouldn't be eating it. Oh, another mistake I made. I'm Doris. I don't know if you did this. You ever buy low carb tortillas or okay low this or low carb that? Oh, I didn't buy them myself because they're not available where I live. But I have to be the evil heartbreaker who tells people all the time those aren't okay, and they're like, "But why? They're only four grams of carbs per serving, but they're only made out of whole wheat. The first yeah, ingredient is whole wheat have- or corn <laughs> or tapioca starch." I, I even had a lady who um, kind of wasn't in my group. It was in another group. She got all up on me when I said, um, those are low carb, not keto. And she was like, nope, they're exactly like doing fat head. They're the same amount of grams of carbs. And I was like, um, not really. I mean, if you're low carb and you're playing, if it fits my macros, then yeah, that fits your macros and your low carb. Knock yourself out. But if you're going to say, hey, I'm keto, and you're eating low carb wraps, those aren't. And people don't know. And this is how I say they don't know. Because I have a friend that I love and she's like us. She started her group new. She's learning. She's growing. And I saw her post something, uh, keto friendly wraps. And they were with low carb tortillas. And I was like, I love you, baby girl. And that's low carb. But you can't really tell people it's keto friendly because it's not by ingredients. It's not. But she didn't know. She wasn't You know, and lots of people are like that. They're not trying to give you bad advice. They just don't know. Somebody down the road said to somebody, said to somebody, they saw in a post one time on Facebook that low carb equals keto. It's low carb, so it's keto. In my group, and I think it's the same pretty much in your group, um, you know, anybody who's in my group that, um, you know, I said, is this keto? I, I know most people are hoping that someone says yes. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you choose to eat it, that's all okay. right. But not just for you, but for everybody else that's, you know, that's been keto for one day or two days or a week. If I see, Dora, you post this low-carb wrap that I know isn't keto, I could just roll my eyes at you and scroll on by. But if I had been keto a week and I was trying to learn and I saw somebody say this is keto, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you. It's not. What you just do with that information is up to you. I have to tell you that it's not. Um, yeah. I have to tell you the truth. It so, breaks my heart. Yeah. It does. Uh, And people send me things in my private message too. Like I had somebody send me and she's like, yay, look at how healthy I'm eating yogurt. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, so first off, it's strawberry banana yogurt. Um, Second of all, it has, I think it had like 32 grams of sugar in the teeny little one and a whole bunch of carbs. So I had to be like, "Uh, love you, not keto. And she's like, but why? It says low carb friendly on it right all over the front. It says, it says. And I was like, but you got to turn it over. Because what it says on the front is usually a big fat lie. Yes. And if it says 
sugar-free, or if it says low carb on it, assume that it's not keto because real food, you don't buy a bag of broccoli and it says sugar-free or well, it's not sugar-free, but low yeah. carb on it. It just is, you know that. Yeah. If you have to advertise something like that, it's probably not. Now, I would say that, honestly, I met a lot of exceptions to that rule when I went to KetoCon. So I will say, guys, there is a whole new flux of actual good keto products. I saw keto wraps that are made out of cauliflower. They're cauliflower wraps. And when I looked at the ingredients, they are actually 100% keto friendly. They have pizza crust. They have... They have the wraps. So they are coming. The next wave of what we have available is coming. There are good things on the way. The companies that I met are brand new. They're mom and pops. They're in their first year of development. They're in their second year of development. They're, some people came with their prototype products just to say, this is what we want to try to get out there to get feedback. So it's, yeah. it's out there. Like it's, We're right on there. I've had companies send me some stuff. Um, you know, our group is pretty small, but my page has got enough, I guess, you know, followers, likers, whatever on it. Um, I've had some companies, startup companies send me stuff, and I sit there and I stare and I scrutinize them back and forth. And, and I talked about this on a live the other day, um, but, um, it, you know, we, we sit here and say we, we want things to change. We want keto-friendly food. We want good food. But then when a company comes out and tries to do it, we, we all go, oh, them. No, oh. That's oh, yeah. But, you know, what I said like in my video or my live was that um, everything is processed. I mean, if I take yes. more than two ingredients and put them together in my kitchen, you processed it. Processed by me. So if we can find, I want to encourage these companies yes. um, to do this. Um, but don't think for a second I'm going to take their word for it. <laughs> no, um, and that's it. Like yeah, we can't. We can't. Afford we can't. That. No, and I literally looked at every ingredient, tasted every one of these products personally spoke with the people who created them heard their story of why they created them and i'll tell you what it was a very small amount of negative reaction but i literally came back from keto con with people going whoa 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 you know all i hear is don't trust this don't trust that and then all of a sudden you come back promoting all these products because i actually found good products like wow did i find good stuff stuff some of it i can't even get in canada and here i am like telling everybody oh my god you've got to try it i can't even get most of these things but i want you guys to have them i want you to be able to try them and the other connection that i made there was when i met all these vendors guess what they want you to try their products too so they're going to sponsor some lives they're going to sponsor some live events we're going to get giveaways we're going to get to try their products for free and let's talk about what giveaway you want to do tonight because we haven't even mentioned that and we're 45 minutes in no we have not and i, I left my my book out there uh, but i want to give away a book um and i had it and i had to leave, come inside because um literally it was like 116 degrees here that's my hair and my you know uh, but anyway <sighs> poor dory's up in canada probably freezing i'm down here in the gulf coast like <laughs> sweating away but anyway um i have I have a book to give away, um, Grain Brain, um, by Dr. David uh, Perlmutter, and I would hold it up and show you all, but <laughs> I left it over there, and, like way out there, and it would take me like five minutes to go get it. Trust me, I've got them. Um, so I want to give that away, <sighs> and Dory, you know I don't know Oh, okay, do this. so this is what we're going to do, guys. Um, I Facebook, I, I wanted to do a lot of giveaways on Facebook. But Facebook is being ignorant these days, and due to privacy settings, it doesn't really show you where things are shared if you're not in that group. So this is what we're going to do. When I hop off of this live and save it, it's going to upload onto YouTube. So what we need you to do to win the book is go over to my YouTube channel, which is Colorful Keto with Dory. And we need you to watch this video and comment on this video. So Robin gets to pick what comment you guys need to make and what number of comment wins the book. So I hashtag have, um, the word share. Okay. When you've shared it. Okay. And so what your group, the YouTube video. Um, and then lucky share number. What's coming to me for 67, 67. It is. Lucky Share 67. 
That's the magic Lucky number. Star number 67 on YouTube. Okay. We'll win a copy of the book. We'll get in touch with you, address and all. And um, people can, uh, you know, if they want to, if they're, if they're listening, um, I, I give away at least once a month, have a giveaway. I'm sending stuff to Australia and Canada. I send a lot to Canada. Um, so you will get your book. Lucky share number 67 on okay. YouTube. Awesome. Excellent. So, and I want to tell you guys, A, there's no limit of shares or entries. So if you shared it in five places, comment shared five times because I'm going to go and count them down. So each time you comment shared, I'm going to comment number one, number two, number three, number all the way up till we get to 67. And then I will announce the lucky winner. And I will pass on your information to Robin so she can get your shipping address. But that's the only way it can be fair where everybody can take part and everybody can play. Because I'm in Facebook jail. I can't share nothing on Facebook. <laughs> and we need to, and the reason we're doing the shares is because just like we were talking about, there's a ton of people out there who who are having trouble, who are, are emotionally eating who are ashamed of what they're doing who are eating in the closet like i used to do so nobody sees them oh who are miserable and my god they don't have to be but they need to know that from um you know dory and i somebody just commented you know that we don't get paid for for promoting no. things no no um we don't get paid for any of this no. stuff i don't no. i don't want to get paid for any of this stuff no. we're normal people that well, I don't know about normal. Let me uh, back it up. Uh, back it up. Back it up. That just want to get the word out there. And the, we can't do it alone, but with oh. the groups, we can do it. So share, share, share. Help somebody. If one person watches this video and says, oh, my God, that's me, I need to contact one of these two and, and, and tell them it's me and see how they can help. If one person does that, it was all worth it. That's my opinion. That's me too. Because you know what? We're not professionals. We don't make any money from this. And I won't say I'm normal, but we're regular everyday people who found our passion. You know, I by accident found a way of life that has changed everything for me. And and now I kind of feel like the Bible thumpers knocking on everybody's door going, Oh my God, have you heard the good word about keto? <gasps> People get sick of hearing about keto, but, you know, another thing I say is instead of trying to tell everybody that I meet, which I don't anymore, I used to, oh, I get mad, believe me, you're going to listen to me, um, there are so many people out there that want to be helped and that need help. I don't need to go yes. recruit people for my keto no. cult. I really don't <laughs> because there's a lot of people that, that need help and oh. they, they come to you. I started my group in October. I think you started yours in about October, same, same time, exact same, same time. time. That I, that I knew. And all of a sudden, I've got like 60, over 1,600 people in it, 3,000 on my page, which I know isn't huge, but I don't, I feel like I know all these people now, but I don't know them, know them. I don't know where they came from. Um, the people either. will find you, and I love you they all. Will. The people will yes. find you. And I adore all my people. I know that every single one of them that has found me has found me through fate. Because that's honestly, since the very, very first video I did, my very first Marie, all the way in Australia, she said to me, Oh, Dory, according to my diary, I met you December 10th. Do you know how that matters to me that I even mention in someone's diary December 10th? And I was like, that was my very first live stream video ever. Oh, oh I love you. And she's been with me since the very beginning like literally my very first weird awkward uncomfortable video and it wasn't good it won't lie mine wasn't either Rude <gasps> comments i let them know how much yeah people will make those <sighs> comments and you know what it's okay um we're, we're we're bigger than that we know so well and i look at it this way um Haters kind of mean you're doing something right because nobody bothers to hate on you if they don't care what you're doing because you don't matter, right? Like, you're, you're not even a blip on their radar. If somebody takes a moment to say something nasty to you, it means you matter. Just saying, I PEMAS. <laughs> I just started doing YouTube. I just started my YouTube channel. My daughter's kind of editing the video. The first few were not good. But anyway, it's okay. You can watch them anyway. And I, oh, I should do it anyway. Don't have, I mean, I have like, I don't know, 50 oh. subscribers. So I think we need a little more than that. I keep asking my daughter, am I viral yet? And I think she's going to stop speaking to me. But anyway, <laughs> um... Anyway, I'm like, I haven't gotten any dislikes yet, and I'm waiting. I'm like, when I get my first dislike, I know 
that I make an impact on somebody. No, right. don't go dislike my video. Please cares? don't, because I, I don't feel that. But when you get that first dislike, oh. you know, thumbs down thing, yeah. you know, I'm like, now I know I've pissed somebody off, and that's what we need to do. Oh, yeah, right? Like, like we have to matter to somebody. Oh, I love it. So, I adore you, lady. Do you have anything coming up this week that we need to watch for? We're closing out on our hour. I'm going to cut out the first 10 minutes of this to put on Instagram TV as a preview, and then it'll be up on YouTube in probably about the next 20 minutes for you guys to comment on. I got a couple lives coming up um, this week. Check the events page for us. Um, but also something that I'm, people have been asking for, and I'm going to start it next week. Um, if you're not a member of uh, the Keto for Life group, we'll get a link up under. We'd love yes. to have you join us. I'm doing a um, an online keto camp. Um, starting oh. next week, I'm doing one, one during the day. Um, one's Monday. I think one's Wednesday or Thursday. It's in the events. But um, I'm doing it. It's for new people for sure. It's a PowerPoint to go along. We'll kind of do the basics. But it'll be alive, so it's interactive. Uh, but then, and then there'll be part two, module two, whatever. But Yay. it's all they're going to be able to print out. Because other people have said to me, okay, how do I teach other people about keto? I'm too new. I don't know what to say. Um, so I'm going to, um, so I'm going to have to do that. Oh. Um, you next Bless week. you. And you can, I've got a PowerPoint that you can kind of reference if you want to talk to people, just different things to say, how to get started, then we'll do module two. So that's coming up. If anyone's interested, it's not Yay. just for great people because it'll help you talk to other people. So that's oh. kind of what I got going. Um, Love and it. And other things further down in the month. But we'll get a link up to my group. We'll get a link up to Dory's group. So make sure everybody, um, we'd love you to be a member of both. Oh, join them all up. We have such a good network of group guys. Like, there's a whole bunch of really awesome groups that we work with and network with together. I'm just, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to make a post that's called Awesome Keto Groups and just have all of our groups that we that, love post together. That's a good idea. Um, you know, the people that I, t I choose to surround myself with, um, they're, you know, I don't want... You know, there's there's some people that they're fighting for. I'd rather have ten followers or ten people that want to be there than a hundred thousand people yes. that are just kind of randomly there. And you know, the people that I've been working with and choose to work with, and there's some that I choose not to. Oh I'm yes, <laughs> oh yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. I don't have time right now because <laughs> I look at their stuff. I'm like, I don't like this. Um, yeah, it's not me. But the people that I do surround myself with, I think we work well together, and we have one goal in mind. Um, and that's certainly not to sell a product or to, you know, anything like that. I don't, I don't have a product to sell. I really don't. No, um, me don't, neither. Just to help people. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Good yes. Good to be in. We'll get it up. So, we adore you. Um, I'm going to be Hi. back in one hour for getting over the hump with Wendy. And we've rescheduled Wellness Wednesday for Thursday because Nancy's having bad internet issues. So we're going to finish the KetoCon swag giveaway, including Maria's cookbook. So you guys want to hop by tomorrow for that. And thank you so much for hanging out with us. And again, we'll see the clip out and on the YouTube channels where you guys want to comment. Lucky number 67! 67. I don't know why, but it's going to be 67. I love it. Have a great Bye. night, doll. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. Bye.